Now we're going to discuss a shortcut that we can use in the case where our surface is a function z equals some function of x and y. In this case, we can always parameterize our curve by letting x equal u, y equal v, and then of course z is just going to be the same function as before but with u and v plugged into it. And so in vector form, that would mean that r of u v would be u times i plus v times j plus f of u v times k. And then if we took the partial derivative of r with respect to u, that would give us 1 i plus 0 j plus the derivative of f of u v is dz du. Okay, and with respect to v, we would get 0 i plus 1 j plus again the partial of z. So to find the cross product here, we're going to take the determinant of this expression and then that's going to give us the coefficient of i would be 0 minus dz du, so negative partial of u with respect to, oops, excuse me, partial of z with respect to u, i, and then for j we would have the partial of z with respect to v minus the zero, and of course we always subtract j, so that would be a negative as well. And then for k, we're going to have 1 minus 0 is plus 1k. Now the norm of this is going to be equal to the partial with respect to u squared plus the partial with respect to v squared plus 1 squared, which is 1, square root. So instead of having to calculate the determinant and the norm every time, if we have functions in this format then we can just skip to a new formula for the surface area, which is s equals the double integral over r of, instead of the norm of the cross product, we have the square root of dz du, but remember u is equal to x, so it's dz dx partial squared plus the partial derivative of z with respect to uh, v, but really v is just y squared plus 1 dA. So let's work on a problem where we use this shortcut. So for example, find the surface area of the portion of the sphere x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 8 that is inside the cone z equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now one reason that I wanted to work this problem is that it, we can apply this formula here. Another reason I wanted to work this problem is because unlike the previous example, um, we're not really given the region r directly. We have to figure it out. And so let's start by graphing r a rough sketch of the situation here. Now they gave us clues here when they told us sphere and cone. So if we didn't remember it on our own, this is a sphere and it's a sphere of radius square root of 8 or 2 root 2. And let's just sketch a picture of that. It's centered at 0, 0, 0. Okay, so here's our sphere and it's going out to 2 root 2 um, on the y, x, and z axes. Alright, now let's draw our cone. Now this is going to be an inverted cone. Um, to see that, first of all, z is always positive, so we're looking at um, all of our, uh, the entire portion of our 
uh, shape, our solid is going to be above the xy plane. Um, if x squared and if x and y are zero, then z is also zero. So our cone is going to be starting at zero zero zero. As z gets larger, we're going to have larger and larger circles, and so um, you can kind of imagine our cone coming up like so. Now of course the cone is going to continue on up, but what we're interested in is the portion of the sphere that is above um, where the sphere meets the cone, because we want the portion of the sphere inside the cone. So we're interested in this portion of the sphere from here up, the little cap there. So we want to know, we're interested in where this uh, cone meets this sphere. Now how can we calculate that? Well, we want to solve these two equations simultaneously to see where these two intersect. And so I'm going to start with um, the fact that z is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, but I notice that in my other equation I don't have a z, I have a z squared. So I'm just going to square both sides. So this tells me that z squared has to always equal x squared plus y squared, and z is a positive number. So I'm going to substitute z squared into that equation. So instead of x squared plus y squared equals, oops, plus z squared equals 8, I'm going to have z squared plus z squared equals 8, which means that 2z squared equals 8 or z squared equals 4, which means that z is equal to 2. Okay, so that tells us that we're at a height here of 2 when these two meet. And moreover, we can actually get the equation of this circle where they meet by putting in z equals 2 into the equation of our sphere. So that would mean that x squared plus y squared plus 2 squared is equal to 8, which means x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. So that would be the equation of this circle here. This also defines the region in the xy plane, r, that we're integrating, uh, or rather finding the surface area above. So if this is our xy plane, this circle x squared plus y squared equals 4 is the boundary of the region r we're integrating over. Okay, now, whenever possible, it's nice to um, be able to write the uh, function we're, we're analyzing as a function of x and y, in other words, to solve for z, if possible. And in this case, it actually is possible, because x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 8, means that z squared equals 8 minus x squared minus y squared, which means that z is plus or minus the square root of that, but remember, the, we're only talking about z's greater than 2. So, um, since z is greater than 2, uh, we can say z for sure is the positive square root of 8 minus x squared minus y squared. Now, that's useful because we don't need to parameterize this, we can just use this new formula for surface area. That is, of course, as assuming that the algebra works out in such a way that the, integ the resulting integral is something that we have tools to integrate. Okay, so to calculate the surface area, we need to first find the partials of z with respect to x and y. So let's find dz dx. Well, if z is the square root of x minus, or rather 8 minus x squared minus y squared, thinking of that as a power of 1 half, we're going to bring the 1 half out front, subtract 1 from it, and take the derivative of the inside. Holding y as a constant, then we're going to multiply times negative 2x. Simplifying, this gives us negative x over the square root 
of 8 minus x squared minus y squared. Similarly, the partial with respect to y, we're going to bring the 1 half out front. Oops, when I subtracted 1 from this, I should have gotten uh, negative 1 half, not negative 1 as the exponent. Okay. Again, we're going to get a negative 1 half. This time, multiplying by the derivative holding x constant, we're going to get a negative 2y. So that's going to give us negative y over the square root of 8 minus x squared minus y squared. All right. Now, let's go ahead and figure, simplify the expression that we're going to take the double integral of. So that would be the square root of this guy squared. Uh, which, if you square that, you're going to have x squared over 8 minus x squared minus y squared, plus this guy squared, which is going to be y squared over 8 minus x squared minus y squared, plus 1. But instead of writing the 1, I'm going to write 8 minus x squared plus y squared over 8 minus x squared plus y squared. So adding these together, the x squared and negative x squared cancel, y squared, negative y squared cancel. Oop, that should have been a negative, excuse me. And so we're going to be left with the square root of 8 over 8 minus x squared minus y squared. Now this is the integrand. So I'm going to go ahead and just stick this in my formula. We want the double integral over the region R that we already discussed of this expression. Now, how do we write that as an iterated double integral? Well, first of all, that's going to be um, challenging to integrate, most likely. And anytime you see an x squared plus y squared, in your integrand, something to consider is whether you might want to switch to um, polar form when you're integrating double integrals. And that's what we're going to do um, in this case. So in other words, uh, we're going to use the fact that we can rewrite x squared plus y squared as r squared. and that would mean that we could rewrite our integrand as the square root of 8 over 8 minus r squared dA. But now we need to write this as an iterated double integral so that we can do some calculating. And that means that since we're working with polar coordinates, that means we're working with r's and thetas now, for one thing. So we need to know um, how to describe the region r in terms of r's and thetas. And we know that the radius of r, if you recall, coming back over here, that the radius of r was equal to um, 2 because the equation was x squared plus y squared equals 4 for the boundary of the region. Well, that would mean that r squared is equal to 4 or r is equal to 2. So we're going to let our radius go from nothing out to 2. So r is between 0 and 2. Now, as far as our angle theta, we want theta to be able to go all the way around the circle. And so theta is going to go all the way from 0 to 2 pi. Now by definition for the iterated double integral in polar form, this can be written as the integral from 0 to 2 pi, that's our theta, of the integral from 0 to 2, that's our r, of in this case, I'm going to go ahead and write out 2 root 2 over the square root of 8 minus r squared times, now remember, when you go from a double integral to an iterated double integral in polar, you have this extra r in here. I always want to forget the extra r, so be careful, don't forget that extra r. 
Now, since 0 to 2 were our r values, dr comes first, 0 to 2 pi, that's our d theta. Alright, now if you work this out, then you're going to get 16 pi minus 8 root 2 pi. And I'm not going to show that um, in the video for just to save time, but um, this example has some important concepts in it because number one, we are using that new um, shortcut for um, surfaces that can be written as functions of x and y. And number two, we saw where we had to find the region R based on the description of the surface.